Good morning, boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick for another edition of Karen Reads. My book today is called One Plastic Bag. What a curious title. As the story is told by Miranda Paul, an American who lived in Gambia, Africa for a while as a teacher and she goes back occasionally to teach there. Elizabeth Zunon is from Africa too, and she is the illustrator. Najua at Gambia. Issa too walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two. Then ten, the basket breaks. Issa too kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and send, settles under a tamarind tree. Issa too slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isatu as Grandmother Mbabe emerges from the kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mbaba. Isatu scurries in and Grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I, I broke your basket, Isatu confesses, but I found this. Plastic grandmother friends. There's more of that in the city. Day after day, Issa too watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wojo from tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays filled with minties wrapped in plastic and rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Issa too shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. They don't have garbage service, service like we do. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then 10, then 100. 
plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path and the thought floats away. Years pass and Issa too grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliest growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries towards grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other ghosts in the village have died. Grandmother's, grandmother Mbave's powerful shoulders sag. Issa too must be strong and do something, but what? Isitu's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She, she knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then 10, then a hundred. What can we do, Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out almost soap. Marum grabs a bucket and Inca fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Yes. Her sister shows Issa to the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Issa Tu's fingers busy themselves in and out and around. Thank you. Issa Tu finds a broomstick, a stick, and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Issa Tu pauses. She and Piggy have an idea, but will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two. Then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Grandmother asks, how is the work? Slow, says Isatu. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. But I, I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight. 
away from those who mock them. Until the morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. A finger sore and blister, Isa too hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then. One woman lays the lossy coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon, everyone wants one. Isa too fills her own purse with Delasi. She sh zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough money to buy a new goat. When she passes by the, puddle of, the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself that one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, it was. Okay, a woman who solved a problem and saved her village. Thank you very much. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.